Hi, so in this video I'm going to talk about Activity Root Map. This has been adapted from Learning Teaching by Jim Scrivener, which is a, a really good book that gives you a, a very good broad idea about language teaching. Um, it's great for new teachers, it's great for uh, experienced teachers. Um, so Activity Root Map is kind of like a, a way of planning activities, kind of a structure for activities. Um, from uh, this book by Jim Scrivener and in this video we're going to go through uh, the steps of the activity route map. Okay, let's get started. Uh, before we look at the steps, um, let's think about activities. So, the basic building block of a lesson is an activity or task. This is something that learners do that involves them using or working with language to achieve some specific outcome. Okay. So there are different types of activities, for example, listening or reading, pronunciation, grammar work, speaking practice, and so on. Okay, so an activity is the basic building block of a lesson. Okay, now first uh, suggestion here is using a course book or a textbook. Uh, now, m often when you're language teaching, you do have a textbook. Uh, and a textbook can be a good resource, it's a good guide. Uh, usually they're fairly well organized in terms of the language uh, syllabus and so on. Um, but as a teacher, you can adapt the content of the textbook into making your lessons more activity focused. So content can be adapted in terms of groupings or skills work and so on. Okay, so my suggestion about textbook is, is don't feel like a slave to the textbook. Okay, the textbook is not teaching the learners you are okay so you know use the textbook in a way that's smart for your situation okay uh, some examples of how to use a, a course book or a textbook uh, think pair share is a nice way of getting students to think and share ideas whole class mingle stand up and move around group mediation or consensus some kind of disagreement or finding uh, agreement uh, ranking ideas is a nice one, giving some examples or collecting student examples and getting them to rank the order that they like or dislike, for example. Jigsaw reading or discussion is really good way of um, getting more group interaction. And you can also do speed and time restrictions, for example. Uh, this makes activities a bit more fun, okay? So when you're using a textbook, don't just follow it like a robot, you know, try to adapt it into activities that are more kind of lively and more interesting for your students. Okay, so the basic route plan uh, for activity route map um, is number one, before the lesson. Number two, in class, which is the lead in, prepare and warm up. Number three, set up the activity. Number four, run the activity. Number five, close the activity. And number six, post activity. So we're gonna look at these six steps for activity route map. Okay, first, before the lesson. So these are the things you have to do before you get into the classroom or before you start. Um, okay, first, imagine each step of the lesson. Think about each step. What kind of seating or groups are needed? Think about what if there are uneven students? What are you going to do? Okay, if you've planned a pair activity but there are uneven students, you need to be pre ready and prepared for that. Uh, what language might need supporting? Okay, so in doing the activities, what kind of language will students need? That can give you an idea about scaffolding. What errors might occur? Okay, you can be ready for that. What will the teacher do during the activity and how long will it take? Okay, so these are all things you need to think about uh, before the lesson when you're planning your activities. Next, so now you're, the students have arrived in the classroom and you're going to do the lead in or the preparation or the warm up step. Okay, first thing you need to do is get interest. Okay, lesson is not going to be good if you don't have any interest. You can set the context or the context of use of the language. Activate background knowledge. Provide examples. Show a picture or a video. 
ask easy warm-up questions. And you can also arouse, arouse curiosity, okay? Get their curiosity aroused. So these are all things that you should think about doing in the kind of warm-up steps of the lesson. Okay, so now let's think about setting up an activity. So you need to think about how you're going to organize the students, give clear instructions, demonstrate the activity, provide visual support, show the outcome of the activity so students can understand uh, what is the aim, and you can also ask checking questions, uh, instruction checking questions, okay? So these are all things to think about when you're setting up an activity. Next, running the activity. So now you've set up the activity, students are getting involved now, students are doing something. So what do you need to do? Well, monitor for misunderstandings, okay? So you need to be walking around, kind of listening and checking. Uh, so walk around the room, listen for language and errors, um, you know, try to get a sense of any errors, but also, um, you know, good language that's being used as well. Don't interrupt though, okay? So if you set up the activity well, you shouldn't need to interrupt the students, okay? Now is the time for the students to communicate, okay? Try and get all of the inform information out in the setting up stage. Don't forget to mention something, okay? Uh, provide hints and repairs only when necessary. Any uh, language errors you should save for class discussion, okay? So don't stop the students um, if you can help it, okay? If you do hear language errors, save them for later. Okay, so that's running an activity. Now you need to think about closing the activity. Try to sense when students have finished, okay? Try to get a kind of feeling for the class. Um, you know, you might have some kind of open discussion, but try and sense when students are running out of things to say. You can walk around and check with different groups. You can just quickly walk to a group and say, have you finished? Have you finished? Okay, you can just kind of quietly check with each group. Um, you can have extra questions ready for fast finishing groups, okay? So if you have a, a main activity, but some groups have finished quickly, it's a nice idea to have like a little extra discussion question just for those students to keep talking while you're waiting for other groups to finish. Uh, you can give a time warning, so you can tell students, okay, one more minute, okay, just let them know that things are kind of coming to a close. And it is important that you move on to the next step together, okay, so try to get everybody finished, get the attention back, and then you can introduce the next steps or, or tell about the next part of the lesson. Okay, so that's closing an activity. So now you've closed the activity, it's a good idea to have one more step, okay, which this is called the post activity. Uh, often in this uh, step, students report the answers to the class. So they might report their findings or what they agreed and so on. You can regroup and compare. This is kind of like a jigsaw in a sense. Um, so each member of the group goes and joins a new group and they have to share or compare their answers again. This is a nice way of extending or having like a stage two for an activity. Uh, students can lead the checking of answers, okay? So when you're kind of reporting and checking what everybody was discussing, you can have students come up to the board writing their examples, for example. Okay, uh, groups can ask each other questions. You can have kind of group discussions across each other. You can, do, you can vote or debate an outcome, okay, so you might collect all the ideas and then debate or vote on that. Uh, this is also a good time to repair language errors, okay, so if you heard any language mistakes, um, it's a good idea to review that as a whole class for a few reasons, okay. Firstly, um, then, you, you know, you don't have to stop the students during the activity. But also, if you pick on one student and say, oh, you made an error, you know, they might feel a little bit nervous about that. So it's better to kind of go over errors with everybody, um, just so you're not picking on individual students. Okay, uh, you can review what language was used. 
in the activity and have the next stage ready kind of transitioning to the next stage or the next activity. Okay, so that's the post activity. Okay, so um, those are some ideas about how to, uh, how to think about activities, how to set up, run, close and post activities, which could be a transition. Okay, the last thing I just want to share with you here is that a lesson, uh, a lesson is a series of activities with transitional stages between activities. So that's really, you know, what a lesson is, is a series of linked activities. So the way I think about this is, is quite visually. So I've, I've made this uh, visual uh, thing to show you. So going from the start, moving on. Here are three activities. You can see the activities are the large circles. But in between the circles are small circles, and the small circles are these kind of transitional uh, post and lead-in stages. Okay, so you've got warm-up, activity, transition, lead-in, and the next activity. Transition, lead-in, next activity. Okay, so think about a lesson as a series of these large steps and smaller steps. Okay, so I hope that gave you some good ideas about uh, the activity route map and uh, the, the basic building block of building your lessons. Okay, thank you very much.